Book 4. Obligations and Contracts. Title I. Obligations. Chapter 1. General Provisions. Article 1156. An obligation is a juridical necessity to give, to do, or not to do. N. Article 1157. Obligations arise from. 1. Law. 2. Contracts. 3. Quasi-contracts. 4. Acts or omissions punished by law, and. 5. Quasi-delicts. 1089A. Article 1158. Obligations derived from law are not presumed. Only those expressly determined in this code or in special laws are demandable, and shall be regulated by the precepts of the law which establishes them, and as to what has not been foreseen, by the provisions of this book. 1090. Article 1159. Obligations arising from contracts have the force of law between the contracting parties and should be complied with in good faith. 1091a. Article 1160. Obligations derived from quasi-contracts shall be subject to the provisions of Chapter 1, Title 17, of this book. N. Article 1161. Civil obligations arising from criminal offenses shall be governed by the penal laws, subject to the provisions of Article 2177, and of the pertinent provisions of Chapter 2, Preliminary Title, on Human Relations, and of Title 18 of this book, Regulating Damages. 1092a. Article 1162. Obligations derived from quasi delicts shall be governed by the provisions of Chapter 2, Title 17 of this book, and by special laws. 1093a. Chapter 2. Nature and Effect of Obligations. Article 1163. Every person obliged to give something is also obliged to take care of it with the proper diligence of a good father of a family, unless the law or the stipulation of the parties requires another standard of care. 1094a. Article 1164. The creditor has a right to the fruits of the thing from the time the obligation to deliver it arises. However, he shall acquire no real right over it until the same has been delivered to him. 1095. Article 1165. When what is to be delivered is a determinate thing, the creditor, in addition to the right granted him by Article 1170, may compel the debtor to make the delivery. If the thing is indeterminate or generic, he may ask that the obligation be complied with at the expense of the debtor. If the obliger delays, or has promised to deliver the same thing to two or more persons who do not have the same interest, he shall be responsible for any fortuitous event until he has effected the delivery. 1096. Article 1166. The obligation to give a determinate thing includes that of delivering all its accessions and accessories, even though they may not have been mentioned. 1097a. Article 1167. If a person obliged to do something fails to do it, the same shall be executed at his cost. This same rule shall be observed if he does it in contravention of the tenor of the obligation. Furthermore, it may be decreed that what has been poorly done be undone. 1098. Article 1168. When the obligation consists in not doing, and the obliger does what has been forbidden him, it shall also be undone at his expense. 1099a. Article 1169. Those obliged to deliver or to do something incur in delay from the time the obligee judicially or extrajudicially demands from them the fulfillment of their obligation. However, the demand by the creditor shall not be necessary in order that delay may exist. 1. When the obligation or the law expressly so declare, or 2. When from the nature and the circumstances of the obligation it appears that the designation of the time when the thing is to be delivered or the service is to be rendered was a controlling motive for the establishment of the contract, or 3. When demand would be useless, as when the obliger has rendered it beyond his power to perform. In reciprocal obligations, neither party incurs in delay if the other does not comply or is not ready to comply in a proper manner with what is incumbent upon him. From the moment one of the parties fulfills his obligation, delay by the other begins. 1100a. Article 1170. Those who in the performance of their obligations are guilty of fraud, negligence, or delay, and those who in any manner contravene the tenor thereof, are liable for damages. 1101. Article 1171. Responsibility arising from fraud is demandable in all obligations. Any waiver of an action for future fraud is void. 1102a. Article 1172. Responsibility arising from negligence in the performance of every kind of obligation is also demandable, but such liability may be regulated by the courts, according to the circumstances. 1103. Article 1173. The fault or negligence of the obliger consists in the omission of that diligence which is required by the nature of the obligation and corresponds with the circumstances of the persons, of the time and of the place. When negligence shows bad faith, the provisions of Articles 1171 and 2201, Paragraph 2, shall apply. 
If the law or contract does not state the diligence which is to be observed in the performance, that which is expected of a good father of a family shall be required. 1104a. Article 1174. Except in cases expressly specified by the law, or when it is otherwise declared by stipulation, or when the nature of the obligation requires the assumption of risk, no person shall be responsible for those events which could not be foreseen, or which, though foreseen, were inevitable. 1105a. Article 1175. Usurious transactions shall be governed by special laws. N. Article 1176. The receipt of the principal by the creditor without reservation with respect to the interest, shall give rise to the presumption that said interest has been paid. The receipt of a later installment of a debt without reservation as to prior installments, shall likewise raise the presumption that such installments have been paid. 1110a. Article 1177. The creditors, after having pursued the property in possession of the debtor to satisfy their claims, may exercise all the rights and bring all the actions of the latter for the same purpose, save those which are inherent in his person, they may also impugn the acts which the debtor may have done to defraud them. 1111. Article 1178. Subject to the laws, all rights acquired in virtue of an obligation are transmissible, if there has been no stipulation to the contrary. 1112. Chapter 3. Different Kinds of Obligations. Section 1. Pure and Conditional Obligations. Article 1179. Every obligation whose performance does not depend upon a future or uncertain event, or upon a past event unknown to the parties, is demandable at once. Every obligation which contains a resolutory condition shall also be demandable, without prejudice to the effects of the happening of the event. 1113. Article 1180. When the debtor binds himself to pay when his means permit him to do so, the obligation shall be deemed to be one with a period, subject to the provisions of Article 1197. N. Article 1181. In conditional obligations, the acquisition of rights, as well as the extinguishment or loss of those already acquired, shall depend upon the happening of the event which constitutes the condition. 1114. Article 1182. When the fulfillment of the condition depends upon the sole will of the debtor, the conditional obligation shall be void. If it depends upon chance or upon the will of a third person, the obligation shall take effect in conformity with the provisions of this code. 1115. Article 1183. Impossible conditions, those contrary to good customs or public policy and those prohibited by law shall annul the obligation which depends upon them. If the obligation is divisible, that part thereof which is not affected by the impossible or unlawful condition shall be valid. The condition not to do an impossible thing shall be considered as not having been agreed upon. 1116a. Article 1184. The condition that some event happen at a determinate time shall extinguish the obligation as soon as the time expires or if it has become indubitable that the event will not take place. 1117. Article 1185. The condition that some event will not happen at a determinate time shall render the obligation effective from the moment the time indicated has elapsed, or if it has become evident that the event cannot occur. If no time has been fixed, the condition shall be deemed fulfilled at such time as may have probably been contemplated, bearing in mind the nature of the obligation. 1118. Article 1186. The condition shall be deemed fulfilled when the obliger voluntarily prevents its fulfillment. 1119. Article 1187. The effects of a conditional obligation to give, once the condition has been fulfilled, shall retroact to the day of the constitution of the obligation. Nevertheless, when the obligation imposes reciprocal prestations upon the parties, the fruits and interests during the pendency of the condition shall be deemed to have been mutually compensated. If the obligation is unilateral, the debtor shall appropriate the fruits and interests received, unless from the nature and circumstances of the obligation it should be inferred that the intention of the person constituting the same was different. In obligations to do and not to do, the courts shall determine, in each case, the retroactive effect of the condition that has been complied with. 1120. Article 1188. The creditor may, before the fulfillment of the condition, bring the appropriate actions for the preservation of his right. The debtor may recover what during the same time he has paid by mistake in case of a suspensive condition. 1121a. Article 1189. When the conditions have been imposed with the intention of suspending the efficacy of an obligation to give, the following rules shall be observed in case of the improvement, loss, or deterioration of the thing during the pendency of the condition. 1. If the thing is lost without the fault of the debtor, the obligation shall be extinguished. 2. If the thing is lost through the fault of the debtor, he shall be obliged to pay damages, it is understood that the thing is lost when it perishes, or goes out of commerce, or disappears in such a way that its existence is unknown or it cannot be recovered. 
3. When the thing deteriorates without the fault of the debtor, the impairment is to be borne by the creditor. 4. If it deteriorates through the fault of the debtor, the creditor may choose between the rescission of the obligation and its fulfillment, with indemnity for damages in either case. 5. If the thing is improved by its nature, or by time, the improvement shall inure to the benefit of the creditor. 6. If it is improved at the expense of the debtor, he shall have no other right than that granted to the usufructuary. 1122. Article 1190. When the conditions have for their purpose the extinguishment of an obligation to give, the parties, upon the fulfillment of said conditions, shall return to each other what they have received. In case of the loss, deterioration, or improvement of the thing, the provisions which, with respect to the debtor, are laid down in the preceding article shall be applied to the party who is bound to return. As for the obligations to do and not to do, the provisions of the second paragraph of Article 1187 shall be observed as regards the effect of the extinguishment of the obligation. 1123. Article 1191. The power to rescind obligations is implied in reciprocal ones, in case one of the obligers should not comply with what is incumbent upon him. The injured party may choose between the fulfillment and the rescission of the obligation, with the payment of damages in either case. He may also seek rescission, even after he has chosen fulfillment, if the latter should become impossible. The court shall decree the rescission claimed, unless there be just cause authorizing the fixing of a period. This is understood to be without prejudice to the rights of third persons who have acquired the thing, in accordance with Articles 1385 and 1388 and the Mortgage Law. 1124. Article 1192. In case both parties have committed a breach of the obligation, the liability of the first infractor shall be equitably tempered by the courts. If it cannot be determined which of the parties first violated the contract, the same shall be deemed extinguished, and each shall bear his own damages. N. Section 2. Obligations with a period. Article 1193. Obligations for whose fulfillment a day certain has been fixed, shall be demandable only when that day comes. Obligations with a resolutory period take effect at once, but terminate upon arrival of the day certain. A day certain is understood to be that which must necessarily come, although it may not be known when. If the uncertainty consists in whether the day will come or not, the obligation is conditional, and it shall be regulated by the rules of the preceding section. 1125a. Article 1194. In case of loss, deterioration, or improvement of the thing before the arrival of the day certain, the rules in Article 1189 shall be observed. N. Article 1195. Anything paid or delivered before the arrival of the period, the obliger being unaware of the period or believing that the obligation has become due and demandable, may be recovered, with the fruits and interests. 1126a. Article 1196. Whenever in an obligation a period is designated, it is presumed to have been established for the benefit of both the creditor and the debtor, unless from the tenor of the same or other circumstances it should appear that the period has been established in favor of one or of the other. 1127. Article 1197. If the obligation does not fix a period, but from its nature and the circumstances it can be inferred that a period was intended, the courts may fix the duration thereof. The courts shall also fix the duration of the period when it depends upon the will of the debtor. In every case, the courts shall determine such period as may under the circumstances have been probably contemplated by the parties. Once fixed by the courts, the period cannot be changed by them. 1128a. Article 1198. The debtor shall lose every right to make use of the period. 1. When after the obligation has been contracted, he becomes insolvent, unless he gives a guarantee or security for the debt. 2. When he does not furnish to the creditor the guarantees or securities which he has promised. 3. When by his own acts he has impaired said guarantees or securities after their establishment, and when through a fortuitous event they disappear, unless he immediately gives new ones equally satisfactory. 4. When the debtor violates any undertaking, in consideration of which the creditor agreed to the period. 5. When the debtor attempts to abscond. 1129a. Section 3. Alternative Obligations. 